Hello and welcome to our tutorial on the full game any% speedrun of Sly 2 Band of Thieves. This multi-part tutorial series is a collaborative effort between the Gandyman, Hi, that's me, and myself, and will cover everything you need to know to speedrun Sly 2 any% In this first part, we will go over the basics of speedrunning the game, version and console information, and the prologue level Cairo. These videos will have some length, so there will be timestamps in the description for different sections of each video. Before beginning, it's recommended that you at least have a casual understanding of this game. This tutorial is up to date as of May 2022 and will include strats for beginners all the way up to advanced runners. We also cover two gadget routes, Super Early Smoke Bomb, which is the newest and currently the fastest, and Late Smoke Bomb, which is an easier alternative that is a bit more beginner friendly. We will discuss gadget routes in greater detail in the next part of this series. The official speedrun page and leaderboards for this game can be found at speedrun.com slash sly2. Any% percent will be the exclusive focus of this series, and refers to playing the game from start to finish as fast as possible with no additional restrictions. There is also 100% which requires you to beat the game while achieving 100% completion, and individual episode categories for each of Sly 2's 8 episodes. To submit a run, you need to have an official release of the game played on official hardware. This includes the original release for PlayStation 2, and the remaster for PlayStation 3 and PS Vita. The remaster can also be played on PS Now, which is PlayStation streaming service available for PS4, PS5, and PC. All runs are required to provide video evidence, unless it's an episode run outside of the top 40% of times. If you need help with capture cards or technical setup, the community is very helpful, so we encourage you to join the Sly Speedrunning Discord from the link in the description. We also have some helpful links to general speedrunning tools such as the timer program Live Split to help you get started. Nearly all of the techniques demonstrated in this tutorial will work on every official release of the game. When there are exceptions, we will clearly define these instances and provide alternatives. The run is fundamentally the same regardless of version or platform. The fastest way to play Slide 2 is with the standalone digital download on PS3, which can be purchased from the PlayStation Store. Compared to a physical disc, the digital version saves time due to faster load times. Among digital releases, the standalone download of Sly 2 is desirable over the Sly Collection or Trilogy because those other releases have an additional menu that loses a large amount of time. In terms of region and language, the NTSC J Korean version is the fastest due to significantly faster dialogue. In pure language time save, Korean saves 8 minutes and 47 seconds to the PAL or European version. Outside of the NTSC J releases, game language matters minimally, but the NTSC U or North American version saves a large amount of time back due to something called health and safety skip, which is exclusive to that version and restricts the game to English. So Korean instead saves 4 minutes and 56 seconds to NTSC U with English. Here you can see how Korean's time save is broken down throughout the run in comparison to PAL and NTSC U. If you'd like to play in English or your native language, that's perfectly acceptable. Most runners start out this way and don't change a Korean until later on. But for those interested in Korean, there's a link in the description to a tutorial from Augie, another Sly runner, on how to acquire the version. It's pretty easy and it's relatively inexpensive. In terms of optimal hardware for speedrunning Sly 2, the fat PS3 is the fastest, the slim PS3 is the second fastest, and the super slim is the third fastest. Many times throughout the run, we will reset the game in order to skip certain cutscenes, and reset speeds vary between different PS3 types. Also, some fat models are better than others. The faster ones are those with the letter from A to K immediately following the CECH in the serial number on the back of the console. However, we encourage you to stay away from models A, B, C, and E, as these models are notoriously unreliable and significantly more expensive due to being backwards compatible. This makes the G, H, J, and K models of the FAT PS3 ideal for speedrunning Sly 2. The PS3's standard HDD or hard disk drive can also be replaced with an SSD or solid state drive for faster resets, saving an additional 4 minutes. The PS3 has a cap for speed which is easily met, so even a cheap SSD will work perfectly as long as it fits the size requirement. In the description we've linked a guide for installing one. For anybody who's new to speedrunning Sly 2, we strongly encourage you to run the game on whatever platform you have access to. You can always upgrade hardware or game version later if you want to go for more time save. Please don't let your system or version keep you from learning and practicing. 
When you launch Sly 2, you'll come to this title screen. If we hit select, it opens a slightly modified version of the options section of the pause menu. For this tutorial, we'll be playing in Korean, but please know that everything is exactly the same except for button mapping to select in the menu or in the safe house. The Korean version uses circle to confirm and X to go back, which is different from other versions which use X to confirm and triangle to go back. Keep in mind that this only applies in game, so this doesn't affect the PlayStation menu. This menu from the title screen is the only place where we can change our settings before the run and therefore not lose time. The menu is identical between languages, but with the game in an unfamiliar language, it's helpful to know where things are in relation to the starting location in the menu. There's no need to memorize any of the Korean text. Two up from the start is for inverting camera controls. On the remaster, by default, moving the right stick up looks up, and moving it right looks right. Toggling this option inverts both directions. One up and two up from there, which are three and four up from the start, are for inverting the up and down movement of turret controls and binocucom controls, respectively. For both, the default controls are up down inverted, despite it saying inversion is off, so you move the left stick up to look down. The left right movement is not inverted and can't be changed. So if you want nothing inverted, like me, you'll need to toggle both of these. Remember to do this every time you start a new file. Menuing is a big reason why a familiar language is ideal for beginners, but if you ever get lost in the menu, just close it and reopen to start again at the beginning. This applies anywhere in the game when dealing with the pause menu, so just remember how to get to the places you want to go and you'll be fine. Sly 2 Any% percent is a new game speedrun, which means we begin on a completely new file with no previous data stored onto it. To begin a run, select the first option in the menu from the title screen, which is New Game. We always use the top file for runs because it makes it faster and easier to reload our file, which we will do a lot. If you have a file already saved there, delete it first with square on Korean, circle otherwise, then select the top file. A Sly 2 Any% percent run officially begins at the first sign of the white flash, which plays when the Binocucom is opened. This can be a difficult spot to split, so optionally you can set your timer to start at negative 1.2 seconds, and then split when you select the file. Before we move forward, we are going to cover Sly's base movement as well as his core movement tech. Sly can walk and jump, and with another jump in midair, he can double jump. We can also run by holding down R1. Running is significantly faster than walking or jumping, so we want to be at this speed as much as possible. Thankfully, we have a piece of movement tech called square boosting, which allows us to carry Sly's horizontal momentum into a jump. So instead of jumping normally, where we immediately lose our speed, we can lunge forward at running speed with a square boost and keep our momentum for the length of the cane swipe animation. Square boosting is performed by pressing square and X on the same frame. Since Sly 2 runs at 60 frames per second, this means you have to hit square and X within the same 60th of a second. In simple terms, both buttons must be pressed at the exact same time. Although square boosting is frame perfect, it's easier than it sounds thanks to the fact that the square and X buttons are right next to each other, and by slapping your thumb down on both, you can easily hit them both at the same time. It's not recommended to use any other methods of square boosting, such as using two fingers, as it will make it much harder than it needs to be. Increasing your success rate with square boosting just comes from practice. I personally find myself missing them when I let my hand or thumb get too relaxed. If Sly ever does a sideways cane swing, that means you hit square before X, and if he does what looks like a square boost, but you don't keep your running speed, then that means you hit square after X. Once we've square boosted, we can't do a second jump until we've landed. We also can't change the direction we're facing, or have any way to stop until the end of the cane swipe. So Sly's facing angle at the start of a square boost is very important. Square boosting always grants a consistent height, but the distance covered in a single square boost depends on Sly's speed. This extreme example illustrates that pretty well. A cane swipe immediately after a square boost preserves the momentum for longer, but with normal running speed square boosts, we generally only do this when needing to go downwards, like off a roof. In that situation, square is doubly useful, as each time Sly does a cane swipe in midair, his falling speed will increase. So generally speaking, to fall quickly as Sly, we can just spam square all the way to the ground. Another piece of movement tech is what's called the glitch high jump. When you hold square Sly, Sly will enter this charge animation for his charge attack or spin attack. Due to a developer oversight, this works even when Sly is midair. 
and when the charge attack animation begins, the game grants Sly fake ground for a brief moment. We can abuse this to get an extra jump. So by holding square and then pressing X three times, we can jump three times. We get the first normal jump off the ground, a second jump thanks to the fake ground, which you can actually see from a dust cloud that appears beneath Sly's feet, and a third jump, which is our double jump flip. The additional jump height completely breaks the game's design, so we will heavily abuse this. An incredibly easy way to glitch high jump is to hold square and then start mashing X shortly afterward. With this, you should be able to consistently get a successful glitch high jump, which is indicated by seeing the dust cloud appear midair and by if the camera has to move upward to follow Sly, which doesn't happen with a standard double jump. This camera movement is less obvious when Sly is moving, but it's still present. Note that you have to continue to hold square until after the dust cloud has appeared. Once you get this down, you can work on just pressing X three times, which allows you a lot more control. The first and second X inputs have to be done pretty quickly, but the third X input can be delayed. Delaying the third X input allows you to cover more distance with what is called an extended glitch high jump. Although these inputs are relatively simple, you might find them a bit awkward to actually perform. In the community, there are two methods of glitch high jumping which are both popular and recommended. The Gnisty Grip and the Claw Grip. The Gnisty Grip, named after legendary Sly Runner Gnist, exclusively uses the right thumb to glitch high jump. The pad of the thumb is used to press and hold square, and the area near the joint presses the X button. That will look something like this. Gnist's video where he offers another demonstration will be linked in the description. The other recommended method is the claw grip, which refers to using the right index finger on the face of the controller. This creates a claw-like shape with the hand. For glitch high jumping, we use the right index finger for square and the right thumb for X. Since the index finger is on square, the middle finger is used to hold R1 to run. Many runners find this to be easier than the Gnisty grip, but it still has a learning curve of its own due to the unfamiliar hand position. The best method is whichever allows you to feel the most comfortable and confident, as long as it doesn't lose time. So play around with these and figure out what works for you. And just as a reminder, for square boosting, you want to exclusively use your thumb, even if you're using claw grip for glitch high jumping. Now it's time to play the prologue level Cairo, one of the most movement intensive segments in the entire game. This segment features a series of difficult skips that are heavily reliant on your mastery of Sly's movement and which collectively save over 4 minutes. This massive time save makes these skips essential. If you're a completely new runner to Sly 2, it's recommended to skip learning Cairo for now, move on to episode 1 or beyond, and come back whenever you feel comfortable. It's not impossible to start with Cairo, both of us did, but it's far from efficient and it will very likely be more frustrating. From this point on in the video, any techniques we teach will be revisited if they come up in later parts, so you won't miss anything by choosing to delay Cairo. From the Vinakicom cutscene which begins the game, hold upright and run to this tree at the top of the staircase. Optimally you would square boost on the left side of this tree, landing right about here, but single jumping onto it is just fine. To land in the correct spot on the tree's base, you'd want to begin your square boost just after reaching the very top of the staircase. From the tree, we will begin Bentley Skip. We want a glitch high jump onto one of the several available areas which are located on this door and the surrounding wall. Basically, there is geometry along this line on which Sly is able to briefly ground, which allows us to do a normal jump if we do so immediately. After jumping off of the wall or door frame, we can double jump to grab the ledge just beneath the ceiling. There are a few methods for this trick, so I'd recommend experimenting with them to figure out what works best for you. Although the line where Sly can ground is wide reaching, I'd recommend these specific setups and spots we'll go over, since not all of the spots along the line are created equal in terms of ease and simplicity. The first method we'll show looks like this. This method glitch high jumps up left from the tree, aims for this spot on the right side of the elevated decoration on top of the door frame, and then mashes X to double jump off of it. Since you can mash X to perform the double jump off the wall, you can essentially mash X throughout this entire thing, beginning with the glitch high jump. The analog direction is up left to start, then transition into directly forward when you do the third jump of your glitch high jump. Before and throughout the jump, you want to make sure Sly is facing the wall, as Sly can't grab the ledge if he has spun around. Alternatively, you can aim further left for this spot just right of the doorframe center, which can be reached by just holding left and slightly up during your glitch high jump. Like the first method, you can mash X continuously. You want to transition into holding forward around when you jump off the wall. This method is the slowest because it places Sly furthest to the left in the ledge, but it's a very solid option for beginners because it's relatively simple. Once on this ledge, wherever you grab it at, 
you are unable to jump up and stand in front of you, so we'll do what's called a ledge grab shuffle or ledge shuffle to our right. This is done really easily by just holding upright on the analog stick and single jumping each time Sly ledge grabs. Make it over to this pillar, which you can stand on top of. However, off this spot to the far right of the line of geometry, we can get up to the pillar without the ledge shuffles, which looks like this. First, glitch high jump while holding neutral, which means don't hold any direction on your analog stick. And with your third jump, go up left to this spot. You want to jump off by tapping X, and then go up right to the pillar with a delayed double jump. The delayed double jump makes the jump easier to make consistently, but also requires timing and a better feel over the wall and slide. This method is more difficult than the others, but is also the optimal method. The ledge grab on the pillar is usually to be expected, but a ledgeless jump is made automatic if you glitch high jump off the wall. However, this is really precise, and I wouldn't recommend anyone attempt this in runs. From this pillar, however we get here, we are going to jump out and then aim back toward the wall with a double jump. With the double jump, we will be aiming toward the widest part of this gap in the geometry, which is right in the center of it, and is even with that angle or uh, elbow in the wall. There we can clip through it if we hit square while in midair, like this. This places us completely out of bounds on an invisible platform. Then if we want for practice, we can just jump back in easily through the same gap. For beginners, you want to be careful to not bonk off the ceiling as this can cut size momentum and cause you to fall. I'd recommend jumping out in the open air toward the center of the room at a wider angle. If you're looking for a visual indicator, you can aim at the rightmost part of this banner rod. Then while midair, double jump and immediately change the direction of your left stick, aiming for the gap beyond the elbow, then hit square before making it there. Out, in, swing. Out, in, swing. This should be a downwards cane swipe, so if you see a sideways one, it means Sly landed before you hit square. If Sly's cane is hitting the wall and you're rolling off, you're either hitting square too early or going too far with your single jump before double jumping. This clip is not very precise and there's a lot of subtle variations to input timing and angle that will work. You can even just resist the ceiling on your way out, but this technique relies on familiarity with the clip and is pretty feel based, so don't worry about this at all if you're just starting out. Stick to the out in swing method. Now that we're out of bounds, we first need to cross this hallway here to land on another invisible platform. Optimally, we do this with a square oost. If timed extremely well, this can be done without a ledge grab. If you aren't comfortable with square boosting, an extended glitch high jump also works. If we fall into this hallway, just go over here in the corner and glitch high jump up to the pillar and hop back up. Once beyond the hallway, continue to here where there is an invisible wall, which we can glitch high jump up to like this. You can see a visible portion of the same wall over here. You want to begin your glitch high jump immediately after you encounter the invisible collision, which makes it possible to complete the jump without a ledge grab if you time it well. Alternatively, you can also square boost to the right here onto some invisible geometry, and then square boost up left onto the wall. This method is even with the ledgeless glitch high jump, but also relies on your comfort with the invisible geometry. Once on top of the invisible wall, the game renders in the next section of the map, and from here just run a few steps and square boost, and then spam circle. Note that the collision on the wall doesn't fully line up with the visuals and this pillar that we see. Now let's look at all of Bentley Skip in one motion. Now that we've skipped the entire first section, we will move on to our next skip, either the Cairo quad jump or rope skip. The quad jump, which is the faster option, looks like this. This is a variation on the glitch high jump, which adds a circle input between the second X input and the appearance of the dust cloud. After pressing square to hold it, we have 23 frames to press X, X, and circle, which is just over a third of a second. The circle input attaches slide to the rope, which gives him a small amount of additional height as part of his thief move animation, and it's then cancelled by the charge attack, which is signaled by the dust cloud. When Sly does a charge attack while on a rope, he will immediately detach. This same thing is happening on a quad jump, just invisibly and midair. After the dust cloud to finish the quad jump, we double jump just like with a standard glitch high jump. Make sure that when you begin the jump, you've positioned Sly on the peak of the rope, which overlaps with the edge of the building, and now we've made it onto this roof. If you're struggling with quad jumping, 
which is really normal for newer runners. The alternative strat would be rope skip. We'll pass the quad jump spot and hold down square to charge attack off the rope so we don't have to jump from it. Then move on to the next rope. Square boosting onto this rope is really awkward, so just jump onto it. We're going to go to where the middle pigeon is standing, and then from there, we're going to glitch high jump to the right and cut back to the left, with the intention of immediately jumping off of the far side of that overhang above the window. We can do that by spamming X off of the overhang. This is similar to the door or wall from earlier, where we can't stand on the overhang, but we can jump from it. Since the pigeons fly away, you can also use the frontmost part of this front window as an indicator for where to glitch high jump, but this can be a bit weird with the perspective. If you're consistently failing this more than once each time, you'd be losing time to just going the casual way, so keep this in mind if you can't do the quad jump and are doing this route. If we've done quad jump or rope skip, we're now on the roof. If you're coming from the quad jump, be sure to run around this gap to the left, and then square boost onto the next roof. If coming from rope skip, the optimal line of movement is different, but we also just square boost onto this next roof. On the second roof, you'll notice that it has a downward slope. When doing a mid-air cane swipe onto a slope, you'll notice Sly slides down the slope if the cane animation is still ongoing when he tries to land. An optimization exists which abuses this, and can cause Sly to slide off the roof with extra momentum, like this. Then attach to the rope. This is affectionately known as an ass slide and is performed by square boosting after landing on the roof and then hitting square mid-air. If done correctly, the cane animation is still ongoing when Sly is completely off the roof, which means we still have our speed. Even more so than with standard square boosts, angle matters a lot here, as you want to be careful to not end up sliding off to the left. Alternatively, in place of the slide, you can just square boost off the roof and attach. The slide is a minor optimization, so don't stress about it. From this rope, charge attack to detach once we're over the balcony. Normally when you enter this room, Murray will spawn and a cutscene will play where he thunder flops through the ceiling. However, Sly 2 utilizes what are called chain triggers. So in the vast majority of cases, a trigger does not activate until the previous one has been completed. Basically, you need to do step A before you can do step B. In this case, you need to see the first cutscene where Bentley comes up the elevator in order to see any of the ones afterward. This also means that once you do one skip in Cairo, you have to do all of them after that point, since we're no longer able to progress in the normal way. So, to skip the Murray section, first get on this railing, either with a square boost or a single jump, and then stand even with the plant. Then do a curved glitch high jump, first to the left of this pillar, and then to the right to ledge grab just past the corner of the structure. Since the developers don't know that it's possible to get up here, the upper structure of the pillar is fake, and we can just ledge grab and then get on top. I personally find this method to be way easier than the other option, and it's also a little bit faster, but there are some people who might prefer the other way, which looks like this. Stand even with the plant, and then do a neutral glitch high jump, and then hold forward with your third jump to ledge grab the opposite corner. One advantage of this method is that you won't take damage for missing it, like you do with the other option. Slide takes very minimal damage in Cairo, but for speedrunners it's also very hard, so keep that in mind if you're worried about dying. Once we're on top of this pillar, glitch high jump from the left side up to the roof. Run along the roof for a step or two and then square boost down to the next balcony. Here we can just square boost toward the first pink banner and spam circle to attach to the rope. This rope can be a bit weird because we're so low when the square boost finishes, so be careful about your angle and make sure to spam circle, or just attach with a normal jump. Then continue to Carmelita skip at the far end of this rope. Single jump off to stand on the right side of this railing. This unique place in Cairo where it is better to jump off of the rope rather than to hold square. Then from this railing, about even with the angle we see on the railing here, glitch high jump onto this next pillar. Do another glitch high jump to end up on the roof. At the top, Sly can occasionally get stuck in some geometry, so if that happens just single jump or double jump to free yourself and you should be fine. Then run straight through the corner of the skylight, aiming just to the right of the dark blue wall in the background. This roof is completely solid, even the invisible parts, but the stuff on top of it isn't, so we can just ignore it. As we approach the blue wall, we have to be aware of the geometry, because if we step off this platform, there's nothing but void beneath. In the void, you fall infinitely, and we'll have to reload the file or reset the run. Although the visible part of this blue wall stops here, it extends further, which you can see if you turn the camera like this. 
part of the wall also extends upwards invisibly, which you can see if I push slide against it. So we're standing on this, and we want to get to a narrow, invisible walkway which runs along this hallway. But there's a gap between us and that walkway, so we have to jump. In our jump, we have to be careful to not bonk on the invisible wall to our left. Rubbing a bit against it is fine, and it can actually help guide you a little bit if you're careful. And also make sure you jump early enough so that you don't just run off the side of the starting platform. Start a few steps to the right of the visible blue wall, and aim to the right of the support beam that runs along the ceiling of the hallway. This diagram is meant to help illustrate the invisible geometry and the spot we're aiming for, and glitch high jump. A glitch high jump is not required to make this jump, a square boost can also make it, or a double jump. But it's highly recommended to glitch high jump, or even do an extended glitch high jump as it makes it a lot easier and gives you more opportunity to correct yourself in midair if necessary. Generally, even top runners will glitch high jump this. After landing on the walkway, we're going to run forward, but the direction needed on the analog stick will change as we move. This is because the game is trying to do the scripted camera angle from the Carmelita chase in the museum, but it's struggling because we aren't where we're supposed to be. When the camera is wonky, we don't have any control over it. Also, this walkway is not very wide, so we can easily slip off into the infinite void. Along the side of the hallway, there is another invisible wall, which we can kind of hug to help guide us forward. Further down the hallway, there is another gap which we have to jump across. This gap is invisible, and the camera's not going to be nice anyways, so we use these ribs in the hallway ceilings to keep track of where we are and where the gap is. If the rib we land beside is number 1, then the gap is halfway between 5 and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I'm going to stop and inch slide forward to show you where the gap is. You can see here that slide is in a tiptoe animation. If I glitch high jump forward from here, I land on ground again, but if we jump short or don't jump at all, we'll fall forever. Optimally, you run along the walkway and surrender to the camera, and time your jump using the ribs. Remember that the gap is halfway between rib 5 and 6, and we start with the one that we land beside. Optimally, the gap can be cleared with a square boost. Square boosting this gap is easier than with the previous jump, but if you miss your square boost, you will usually avoid so feel free to glitch high jump on this one as well. Since the camera is so weird, we use the hallway to indicate our angle and which direction we need to hold, as it changes fluidly and can also vary slightly from subtle variations in movement. Generally, you just have to get comfortable with this through repetition. But if you're really struggling with this and are willing to sacrifice some time, you can just land on the invisible walkway and then run straight forward. You can even use up on the D-pad if you'd like. This causes Sly to hug the wall more tightly and should also keep the camera in a more consistent direction. Then between the 5th and 6th rib, we'll reach the gap, and we just need to glitch high jump when we see the camera turn. That's it. Just count the pillars, and then react to the camera turn. This method is amazingly beginner friendly, so we definitely recommend it if you're new. It loses a small amount of time to the faster way, but it's recommended to just get runs going, and improve at the game in general, rather than to get stuck here. If you void in a run, you should just reset the run completely, but if you're in a marathon setting and can't reset, you should save to the top slot and then load the file. This will spawn you back at the beginning, but won't require you to rewatch the opening cutscene. But now, we're past the really hard stuff. From here, continue forward, aiming for the tail of this plane that you see inside the building. About a half second after the camera begins to shift again, you can either square boost or glitch high jump to get on top of this invisible geometry here. Then steer around to the left, careful to clear the invisible geometry that extends out from the hallway, or square boost over it. Then just run a straight line as best as you can, until the camera breaks free again. In this section, we're completely safe, and there's nothing for us to fall into or get blocked by, so we can just run. Your line of movement will be dependent on the next strat you do. Option 1, which is the optimal and harder method, aims to the rightmost part of this weird L thing we see in the background. As we get closer, the map beyond it will render in. We need a square boost before we cross over that window frame beneath Sly, aiming toward this banner rod, and land on the railing. Then, after landing, do an extended glitch high jump from the edge of the railing and spam circle to attach to the rope. This movement isn't super easy, so you might find it easier to just stop on the balcony and allow the camera to settle before doing the jump. But you have to deal with the fact that you're doing it backwards since for this final section, the camera is locked again. If preferred, you can also make it to the rope from these other starting locations, but these are a bit slower. 
optimally and in one motion, it looks like this. Notice the cane swipe in midair to make slide fall faster, but this does increase the difficulty and isn't necessary. Option 2, which is the easier but slower method, aims a bit left of the end of the hallway. When zooming in, you see the ribs have rendered in. We're aiming to the leftmost part of those, so run in that direction. As we get closer to this hall, the camera will spin like it did with void jumps, but it's less of a worry here because there's no danger of voiding. Drop down to the balcony, which extends directly out from the hall, and jump onto the rope. And now that we're on this rope for the final section, just continue normally. Charge attack to detach from the ropes without jumping, and square boost the jumps. Square boost, then press circle to attach to the ropes, and just repeat this until we get to the final roof. Since the van isn't here to pick us up, we have to hit the end trigger on our own. From the edge of this roof, glitch high jump to get to the next one. This glitch high jump has to be extended at least a little bit, and if you extend it with good timing, you can make it without a ledge grab. You can do this jump from pretty much anywhere along the roof's edge, but we prefer this spot. On this roof, we're going to run forward a bit and then square boost or jump into the end trigger, which is located below us towards the street. Here's a picture of the trigger's boundaries, drawn by Hexu. Pretty much everything down there is fake, so if you miss this trigger, you'll fall into the infinite void and have to restart from the beginning. Thankfully, the trigger is quite big. Optimally, you would square boost into the trigger from pretty far away, but this is very risky because if you miss the square boost, you'll miss the trigger. A better idea would be to square boost from a position where you can still hit it if you were to make a mistake with your square boost, as long as you don't hit square again mid-air. For beginners or pretty much anybody who wants to do this safely, we recommend just running upright off this furthest part of the roof. Continue to hold upright and spam square until you hit the trigger. With this method, you should be able to fall into the trigger consistently. And that's it! That's all of Cairo. Runners usually split for Cairo when Sly enters the end trigger and the black bars appear, or when the Sly logo has completely faded out. After Cairo, there's an unskippable animated cutscene, so we watch it. But there's one more optimization for this video. After the cutscene, the game will bring up the episode menu and will autosave. Because this is the first save on a new file, there will be a pop-up informing us about the autosave indicator, which locks us out from continuing. However, Saving manually allows us to save while the episode menu animation goes on in the background, which also moves the pop-up earlier and results in a half-second time save. After the cutscene, from the load, mash the start button to immediately bring up the pause menu. Go up once to options, confirm, down once to save, confirm twice, then spam square. You can alternatively go down once to get to options instead of up, but it doesn't matter. And now we're free to move on to episode 1, which we will do in the next part of this series. Thank you so much for watching. We encourage you to join the Sly Speedrunning Discord from the link in the description, where you can direct any questions you might have and find additional resources for speedrunning the Sly Cooper series. Remember to like and subscribe and be sure to check out Gandy's channels in the description. And we'll see you all next time.